Hi, I am Mrs. Sloan, and this video is part three on a video series on the immune system. So let me make myself a little bit smaller, get over here in the corner and present. Oh, I'm right here again. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish out our discussion on the immune system. So if you have not watched video one or two, this might be a little bit difficult um, because what we want to do now is look at how both in your uh, innate immune re response and how your adaptive immune response can work together to protect you. And then we will look at some ways they communicate with each other with cytokines. We'll talk about passive and active immunity and the purposes behind vaccines. And then when things can go bad with like allergies or um, other diseases. All right. So hopefully you've watched video one and two already. Down in the descriptor of this video are my students' group shared notes. And so we are, and you're free to use those, and you can type in column one, and then column two is where we throw in some pictures um, that kind of help with the reviewing of the material. So in my notes, I am partway through 33.4 in those notes. And if you could skip right ahead, we just finished up talking about T cells um, and B cells before that. So we are on the both box okay right above the big picture and so i made this venn diagram to try to help you kind of distinguish between um, both types of um, adaptive immunity or learned or acquired immunity so b cells right their target is the actual virus bacteria or toxin the actual cell or toxin or chemical that is foreign to your body and needs to get destroyed that is their target whereas t cells their target is our own cells that have been infected by that pathogen. So they work differently in order to wipe it out. B cells, um, if stimulated, will make plasma cells, and those plasma cells will secrete antibodies. Those antibodies, we, we discussed them already, they're Y shape, right? And they will tag and mark that foreign substance for destruction. That's how they work with all the free floating viruses and bacteria in either your interstitial fluid, your tissue fluid surrounding your cells, in your lymph or in your blood. And also with your um, antibody mediated response, you also make memory cells and memory cells are for the future. Because after you wipe out that infection, then all your clone army, remember, commit apoptosis and you just keep the memory cells. T cells make also memory cells for the future, but they make helper T cells, which regulate and coordinate your entire immune response or like the generals or the army. And they also make cytotoxic T cells who kill anything that displays an antigen on an MHC1. Remember, if you display an antigen on an MHC1, you're done. If you're on an MHC2 that you display your antigen, I will help you because that's probably a dendritic cell or a macrophage or a B cell. So on your notes on both, both B and T cells are specific. Okay, they have very, they're very specific. Their receptors can only recognize one, maybe two antigens at best, the B cell receptors and the T cell receptors. Therefore, we must have millions of varieties of B and T cells so that we are pre-adapted for any possible antigen that we would experience in our lifetime. So let's look at an overview about where those came from again. So we have our blood stem cells, you have myeloid stem cells, which are going to give you your red blood cells to carry oxygen, also platelets ultimately to clot your blood, and then your granulocytes here. We've already had several videos over that, so go back and look at that if you need some help on these guys. Okay, your lymphoid stem cells, these are where your B lymphocytes are and your T lymphocytes and natural killer cells. Now, there are natural killer T cells, if you remember from last time, or here, I will show you. Let me move out of the way. So there is a pluripotent stem cell. Here, I'll get smaller. Okay, A pluripotent stem cell, and which will lead to your lymphoid stem cells. And T cells that go to the thymus to mature, that's why they're called T cells, this is your T lymphocyte, which could be your helper T cell, your cytotoxic T cell, or your memory T cell, ultimately. Those that do not go to the thymus, okay, then those could be just natural killer cells. They kill anything um, that displays a foreign antigen, whether it's your own body cells, it's a cancer cell, or one that's been infected. 
Okay. Also from your lymphoid cells, you get your B cells, your B cells. If, if stimulated, that was a different video, we'll make plasma cells. Those plasma cells are the ones that are going to secrete antibodies that tag and mark, the, mark them for destruction. Remember the myeloid stem cells. And I just wanted you to have this as a summary if this would be helpful. An erythrocyte is a red blood cell, carries oxygen. Um, you get from your platelets come from a megakaryocyte. You do not need to memorize that. Monocytes, remember. Um, will become macrophages once they're out and fighting and engulfing and they they're slower to the scene but are more long lasting i call a monocyte a bruce bannon and then a macrophage is like the hulk and then your granulocytes and i did a little summary for you there okay and here is um a scenario let's look at these different situations and why and how they would respond to it so this is a cell whose MHC marker is empty. So notice both T and B cells will ignore this. T cells will ignore it because there's no ant antigen in the MHC, whether it's a one or a two, okay? But it looks like two because it's got two arms there, right? So I'm gonna assume it's the MHC two. B cells will ignore this one because B cells are not stimulated by antigen presenting cells. B cells to start their immune response they are triggered by the actual antigen on the actual pathogen itself, right? And then T cells, they will respond to this one because this guy has been eaten, broken up, and now he's getting displayed on this MHC2. This looks like a macrophage to me, presenting it to a T cell, remember MHC2, and I will help you. All right, so this is kind of showing you putting it all together, all right? Putting it all together. And when you're in class, I'll kind of show you a cool video. Um, I'll try to put a link to this video, it's pretty cool, um, at the bottom too of the descriptor on YouTube, all right? So look over here, these are your non-specific defenses. So you have some, um, some barriers to entry like skin and mucous membranes, hair, all those kind of things. You have protective proteins that we talked about that you can release. Um, you have the entire inflammatory response and mast cells, remember, that are going to secrete histamine to, to uh, cause this, the vasodilation so that these monocytes can get out and become macrophages. Dendritic cells engulf, right? Um, neutrophils are first on the scene and most prolific. And here comes some natural killer cells too. On your specific defenses, right? You have right here, you have, look at the guy in the middle. He's an antigen um, presenting cell. So it could be a macrophage or a dendritic cell. And he's displaying this antigen to a T cell. Notice this is called a T cell receptor. This is part of your cell mediated immunity. So once this T cell is activated, then he can become a helper T cell. He can become a cytotoxic T cell or a memory cell for future. Remember cytotoxic T cells are all about killing those cells that display an antigen um, on an MHC1. MHC1 and you're done. MHC2, I will help you. B cells will be actually activated by the actual pathogen and they will grow up to be an activated B cell that will release antibodies and they will also form memory B cells as, as well. So this is a good overview right here. Um, next, this picture, I liked this one and I made a little note. I There's a, a clear picture probably, I stuck it in your group shared notes, but that can help you see between the adaptive defenses and the innate defenses. And I'll let you look at that. Those are in the notes that I have down in the descriptor. All right, so back to cytokines. We talked about this in part one. And if you recall, I said cytokines could be uh, used in both the innate and adaptive immunity, right? And so, Remember, um, a cytokine is a cell talking to another cell with a chemical. One of those chemicals it can release is interferon. Interferon says, I'm infected, save yourself. And I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. And interleukins are things that are secreted like by a macrophage, which amps up. It's like the all the immune cells are drinking Red Bull and eating donuts or something, and they've all amped up to fight and to kill. That's what interleukins do. They're like, fight on. So here, I, I kind of wanted to show this um, from a Super Bowl game from times past. Interleukins are like on the... Um, 
on the offense. They're like, let's go, let's fight. So they would be on the offense of the battle. And then interferons are on the defense. Like, oh my gosh, I'm infected. Let's defend ourselves and neighboring cells as well. So for instance, on this interferon that you can see right here, this is a virus infected cell. He is now releasing interferon and look at all the different things it can do. It signals neighboring cells who have receptors for interferon, right? Cell communication. So it's like, I hear you. These are his ears his receptor. I hear what you're saying. And what it says to do is destroy your RNA and reduce your protein synthesis. Because if you are infected by a virus, you do not want to give them the capabilities to take over your host cell machinery and make more viruses. It can also signal neighboring cells to just basically commit apoptosis. They're saying, you know what, you should kill yourself because I'm infected and you're probably infected too. So just commit apoptosis. Or this interferon can also activate immune cells. So on your notes where it says um, cytokines as therapeutic agents, they um, first of all, cytokines are defined as signaling molecules produced either by lymphocytes, monocytes, or other cells. All of the cytokines, if we look back to all of them that I have here, and let me see what I have next. Oh, no. Okay. All cytokines are going to fall into a couple of, um, categories. So it's either going to stimulate white blood cell formation or function, white blood cell formation or function. And currently some are approved for use as therapy for cancer and other conditions like hepatitis C and those that are progressing with multiple sclerosis. So interferon is a type of cytokine released by virus infected cells as a warning to protect other cells, right? As a warning to protect other cells. Okay, so here's interferon. And interleukin antagonist may help prevent organ rejection, autoimmune diseases, and allergies, which we haven't talked about quite yet. All right, but we will. So let's take a look here. I mentioned this in the last video, and this is the picture that I needed and I didn't have in video two. Okay, but I'll just address it real quick here about monoclonal antibodies. So remember I said mono, one type, right? It makes a certain kind of um, antibody. And this is where you fuse B cells with um, cancerous mouse cells and get it to produce um, a lot of antibodies for you. And you can use that to generate antibody um, factories to target a specific um Let's say it could be a cancer cell. It could be used to detect whether or not you have certain types of cells in your body. You could use it to target um, to um, for classification purposes. So you can also get these monoclonal antibodies to bring anything you want along with them. And it could be that you could use the monoclonal antibodies to target a cancer cell and it brings an individual bomb right to that cancer cell to destroy that cancer cell. So those are some of the uses there. And I wish I would have had that in my last video, but sorry, it was out of place. All right, so let's um, compare and contrast um, innate versus acquired. You already know innate immunity. You're born with it. I showed you the policeman right here. But on your acquired immunity, there's two ways you can get it. You can get it because you were naturally exposed to somebody sick, sneezing on you, whatever you touched a surface and touched your face, or your nose, or your mouth or something like that. So you can get it naturally. Or you can get your own active immunity by things like immunizations. Like if they develop a corona, it looks like it looks good that we could have a coronavirus vaccine. So if you become vaccinated against it, then you can start to develop your clone armies to protect yourself so that if you're ever really exposed um, to the coronavirus, you already have your memory cells ready to go with that. Now, passive immunity is when you're in a time crunch. You've been exposed to something. Maybe you got a snake bite. You don't have time to develop antibodies against that. You're, you could die of that snake bite, right? So you need a gamma globulin shot, which is just a shot of antibodies right now. Now, you, you that is going to be a very short-lived immunity because you're borrowing that temporarily. Now, where you see this more is passive immunity is when a mother breastfeeds her child. Now, when the baby is in utero, when it's inside of you, your antibodies pass right across the placenta to your baby. But once your baby's born, right, it's this 
precious new object that has never been exposed to antigens in this world. And that's why right after you give birth to a baby, you don't want to take them to Target at 10 o'clock at night. All right. You want to protect it, keep it in the home for an extended amount of time so that it can start to develop its adaptive immunity. It can start to adapt to your home environment. And so it gives it a chance to build up its immune response. During that time, if you're breastfeeding, then all the antibodies that are in your body will also be in your breast milk and they will be passed to that child. So on active immunity, which is here on the left, you are exposed directly to the antigen. You develop BNT cells that can fight the infection. It can be induced by vaccines, which are a weakened version of the antigen. The first exposure, let me give you a slide here. Your first exposure, um, you have a slow rise in your antibody teeter in the amount of antibodies that you have. But the second exposure, which is sometimes why you have to get booster shots, like two shots in order to be immune, then you get a, a higher higher rise in antibodies upon your second exposure. It's a more dramatic rise. And antibodies, like I said, can be used against cancer. And you have a highly suggested reading and thinking about that. Okay. And then passive immunity is short lived because you don't own this immunity. You're just borrowing somebody else's antibodies. So it's short lived because it is borrowed and you're borrowing another's antibodies when a person is in immediate danger and you need that. You do not develop memory cells. Um, you don't get a chance to develop them because the antibodies will inactivate that antigen before you even get the you know, before the, you know, two weeks or whatever that it might take 10 days to two weeks to develop your active immune response. Examples of that are um, breast milk and gamma globulin shots with antibodies. All right. So now, okay, let's talk about allergies because a lot of you might experience allergies. So allergies are triggered by allergens like pollen or bee stings. You could be allergic to peanuts. You could be allergic to penicillin and antibiotic. And basically what happens is you have an immediate response within, re within seconds because it gets worse every single time because remember, your adaptive immune response gets better and better the more it's exposed to that. And so your overreaction to pollen, let's say in the air, gets stronger and stronger as you progress. And so you have all the cold-like symptoms, and a lot of that is attributed to, to your mast cells releasing histamine, and that's why you might take antihistamine. However, if it's something that you're highly allergic to, this can bring on anaphylactic shock, okay? And that is characterized by sudden life-threatening drop in blood pressure. It's like your blood pressure drops so much. You know why? Remember we talked about vasodilation and the, and the mast cells releasing histamine. It's too much. It drops your blood pressure too low and then that's bad. Or you can have swelling and it blocks off your trachea so that you cannot um, breathe. Okay. That's an immediate response, but you can have delayed responses with allergies too. things like poison ivy um, or poison oak. So you get that toxin on your body. Sorry, hair troubles. You get that toxin on your body and you have that delayed response that's due to T cells. Or maybe you wear some cheap earrings and then by the end of the day, your ears kind of itch a little bit. That is a delayed response to the cheap metal of those particular earrings. So delayed response is initiated by memory T cells. The response is regulated by cytokines, like how um, apt, amped up it is. And then example would be like TB tests, um, poison ivy or cheap jewelry or cheap jewelry. All right. So um, next, let's talk about blood types just briefly here. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so on blood types, you can donate your blood to anyone that won't attack your antigen. So if you have type A blood, then you have A antigens and you will make anti B antibodies. So if you have type A blood, you do not want to receive B blood or AB blood because the B will make you angry, right? And if you have B blood, it's just the opposite of that. If you have AB blood, you have both A, um, a antigens and B antigens so you will not make either one of those types of antibodies. So um, you can receive A, B, or O. O blood, you don't have any antigens. You, you will not make anybody angry if you donate blood. But however, you can only receive O blood. And like I said before, RH is then a second antigen. So you can be RH positive or RH negative. Now, what? here's just a picture of a red blood cell. So this individual right here, any guesses? 
they would be AB positive because they have the A antigen, the B antigen, A antigen, B antigen, and the RH antigen. So they will not make antibodies against A, B, or RH. So this would be this individual could accept blood literally from anyone. All right. Now, what happens? Well, you'll just have that um, IgM immunoglobulin, and it just causes them all to coagulate in there. And truth be told, you can get blood one time from somebody who doesn't match your blood. If you're on a desert island and you need a transfusion and there's no doctor, whatever, you can get it one time, okay? Because it takes 10 to 14 days for you to develop that immune response. But the second time, remember, you'll have memory cells and then you will attack it and that can be really bad. So blood type re reactions, you will attack any blood that you can build antibodies against. You will attack any blood that you can build antibodies against. Now, where this becomes a problem, okay, is remember, antibodies can cross the placenta. Obviously, these antibodies are ginormous. They're not that big. But antibodies can cross the placenta. So let's say a mother is Rh negative, but she is pregnant with an Rh positive child because of the sperm, right, that fertilized that egg. And remember, we're diploid organisms, right? So she could be have one Rh negative, but if her husband gave her an Rh positive um, to the zygote, then the baby will be Rh positive. So the first pregnancy, this is not a terrible thing for the first pregnancy. And in the process of giving birth, you're going to get some of the baby's blood cells within the mother's blood when when you give birth. And then now the mom will start to build and respond to it in 10 to 14 days, then she will have the ability to attack RH blood. That's okay because the baby's out of her. But the problem arises on a second pregnancy and if that baby so is also Rh positive, she will have antibodies in her blood that can bind to the baby's blood and then this can cause a miscarriage as a result. So that's super sad. So obviously. Um, so what they do is if you are Rh negative and you have an Rh positive blood, then they will suppress your immune response so that you will not develop antibodies so you are safe to deliver the next child. You won't have to worry about that. Um, you can also have issues with organ uh, and tissue rejection, right, due to the antigens that are on there. So tissue rejection can be prevented for some time with administration of immunosuppressant drugs. All right, so some disorders, okay? We've talked about this before. So these are a whole range of autoimmune diseases. One of those is lupus. Lupus is where you attack the tissues of your body. It's one thing if you attack your joints, but you can attack your kidneys, you can attack your heart, you can attack your lungs. This is a terrible disease because you have forgotten, right, self from non-self and you are attacking your own body's cells. So um, immune um, system disorders and adverse reactions, it results when cytotoxic T cells or antibodies mistakenly attack the body's own cells as if they have foreign antigens. The causes are unknown, um, but sometimes they appear to follow recovery from some infection at some point. Um, examples are multiple sclerosis, systemic lupus, rheumatic fever, diabetes type one is that, and that's where you attack the islets of Langerhans, the cells, um, remember you have alpha and beta cells in your pancreas and the beta cells secrete insulin and those cells are attacked so that you cannot um, make that insulin. Um, there are no cures um, of autoimmune diseases, so you just have to control them the best you can um, with um, drugs, with different drugs. Okay, and then I want to remind you why your immune system, why we have put it underneath unit four, right, which is all about cell communication and the cell cycle, because we talked about it's all about sensing, right? In this case, what's triggering this is some sort of pathogen. And then your receptors are whether it's your adaptive, your innate immune response, you have receptors there that can tell self from non-self. And then you're gonna make more of those cells by what process? Mitosis, which is also part of unit four, so that you can have a response to it, to respond to it. There's a lot of cell signaling in there. We talked about cytokines and cell to cell receptors, right? And then what are we trying to do? We're trying to bring your body back into homeostasis as a result of that. All right. Oh, there I am. So that that's the end. And I hope that was helpful for you.